You know, it's really interesting to me. Members of Congress, their salary is $174,000 per year, and that is a ton of money. You are living very comfortably if you make $174,000 per year. I'd argue that members of Congress don't do enough work to warrant that high of a salary. Nonetheless, that's the salary of members of Congress, but even though that's their salary, somehow, after years of serving in Congress, they become multimillionaires. Are they getting raises? I mean, what exactly is going on here? Well, I think that insider trading watchdog Unusual Whales has a little bit of insight looking at the case of Nancy Pelosi, House Speaker. So Nancy Pelosi, um, she exercised 10 million in Microsoft shares on March 19th. Microsoft then launched a military deal. She sits directly on relevant committees. Also, she bought 1 million in Roblox stock and they have the receipts right here. Nancy Pelosi bought lots of stock in Microsoft, uh, in Roblox. Um, now they go on to explain in another tweet here that Nancy Pelosi bought the Microsoft stock and then subsequently approved the deal that increases the value of Microsoft after she bought their stock. Kind of seems a little bit conspicuous there. Also, in February of 2020, she bought $6 million of Amazon and Facebook via exercising 2019 calls, which I, I think is pretty um, troubling given that she is a regulator who's supposed to oversee them and shouldn't have a vested interest in the amounts of money they make. Nonetheless, in December of 2020, when it comes to the stimulus, she was a little bit unsure. However, her husband bought ITM, Tesla, and other stock, and the very next day, all of a sudden, she was in favor of the stimulus. Um, I'm guessing, this is speculation, when uh, she was able to personally profit off of it, when companies would get money out of that stimulus, benefit from that stimulus, then all of a sudden, she's in favor of it. Now, let's just stop for a second and let's interpret this in the best faith way imaginable. Let's be as charitable to Nancy Pelosi as we can possibly be when we don't have to do that. Let's assume that the timing isn't actually suspicious and she, you know, she's just a, she's just trying to enrich her, enrich her own wealth. So she's buying stocks in Microsoft, in Roblox, and she's not necessarily planning on crafting legislation and voting on legislation that increases their value, which in turn benefits her. Let's assume that that's not what's happening here. Isn't it still a little bit troubling that members of Congress have a lot to earn personally if these companies increase their value? Isn't it a little bit weird that if you're going to be overseeing these companies, regulating these companies such as Amazon, such as Facebook, Tesla, wouldn't it be a conflict of interest if you personally benefit from them gaining value? The answer is, is yes. So even if she's not guilty of insider trading, even though many members of Congress, there's evidence that that is the case, it's still a conflict of interest. Why are members of Congress allowed to purchase millions of dollars in stock of companies that they're supposed to be regulating? Am I alone here? Is this not extremely troubling? Doesn't this have implications on their legislative behavior? How is this okay? How is this acceptable? And it's not just Nancy Pelosi. We saw last year that Kelly Loeffler, David Perdue, Dianne Feinstein, they did the same thing. Once they were briefed on the severity of COVID-19, they sold stocks. They didn't want to lose money. So do you understand? This is a huge issue here. Members of Congress should not be able to do this. Like put aside the timing of this. And if she's doing insider trading, which wouldn't surprise me, but this shouldn't be a thing that happens. Why in a democracy are we allowing this to happen? Completely unacceptable. Why should we take anything that Nancy Pelosi has to say seriously as it relates to the companies that she has stock in? Because it is her benefit to see these uh, companies increase their value. It's just infuriating, but this continues to happen and nothing will come of this. Nobody's going to say anything about this in Congress. It is just, it's going to get swept under the rug and this corruption will continue in perpetuity. It's just, it's so disgusting, but it's commonplace. We've become so desensitized to lawmakers just being 
brazenly corrupt and have so many, you know, having so many conflicts of interest that this won't even probably make headlines when this should be like a huge scandal. It's just, it gives me a headache to think about the plethora of ways that our lawmakers are corrupt. It's not just that they buy stocks and they, you know, sell stocks based on the insider information that they have. And we have evidence that this happens time and again and again, but also they take money from large multinational corporations who they then are incentivized to do the bidding of. Do you understand? This is why nothing in Congress that the American people want gets passed. It's why in 2014, a Princeton University study by Drs. Gillens and Page found that when it comes to policy outcomes, average Americans have a statistically insignificant impact on what gets passed because the special interests, the elites, they're the ones who dictate policy outcomes. What they say gets codified into law. Things like this. This is why. Shame on Nancy Pelosi. If we had a functioning democracy and a functioning media apparatus, there would be pressure on her to resign because this is inexcusable, it's unacceptable, and nobody should have teeth in the game as it relates to private companies. That doesn't make sense. That's something that shouldn't happen logically. We should just not let this be a thing, but I mean, this is America, so of course, you know, uh, this is what happens.